Hello and welcome to this Hasselblad webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Mark Whitney, part of Hasselblad's uh, global marketing team. And today we've got an interview with Hasselblad master, Ben Thomas. Uh, ben is gonna be joining us live all the way from his home in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, just before we meet uh, Ben, let me just go through some of the uh, standard slides. So just to let everyone know that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted on the Hasselblad YouTube page within a few hours of the webinar finishing or worst case uh, tomorrow morning. And you can also find all the other previous webinars on that same channel as well. So if there's any that you've missed over the last couple of years, um, you can find them all on there and enjoy watching them. Uh, a quick agenda for today, uh, very uh, brief and, um, and simple. So we've got an introduction to Ben. Uh, we're then gonna have a look at some of his early work and how he got started in photography. We're then gonna have a look at his Hasselblad Masters 2018 project. Um, that's uh, the year he won the Masters and the, the images he shot for the resulting book. And then um, if we've got some time at the end, we'll have a look at some of Ben's recent projects. So we estimate this to be around about 50 minutes in length, uh, which will give us uh, 10 minutes or so at the end for some question and answers. Uh, but feel free to also ask questions throughout the whole webinar using the uh, GoToWebinar control panel. Um, we'll look through the uh, questions as we go through and any that are relevant to what we're talking about, we'll try and squeeze in as we go through. So Ben, uh, good evening for you. Hey Mark, how's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it's uh, getting quite late for you over there. Is it roughly about 11 o'clock at night, isn't it, I think? It is, it is, but yeah, no problem at all. Glad to be here. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so how's things been for you um, recently? You, you, you busy? And uh, I hear Australia have now started to open up their borders with the COVID pandemic passing, hopefully, so. Yeah, life is, is it's starting to get back to normal now. So um, borders are opening up, um, summer's coming along. So um, yeah, hopefully um, onwards and upwards from here. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, so yes, a bit of an introduction to you. So um, as I say, you're joining us today from Melbourne, but you originally grew up in Adelaide, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, and um, I think we said in our introduction uh, or the description for the webinar how you first got into photography um, when you were discovering your new um, home place. So, yeah, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so um, photography for me really um, kicked off after I moved to, to Melbourne. So it um, would have been, you know, 2004, 2005. Uh, so moving from, from Adelaide to Melbourne, it was a really big jump for me personally, it felt like, I don't know, probably the equivalent of going to a New York or a London. The city was was really huge. Um, there were new things, you know, obviously around um, every corner. And, um, you know, within a, within a relatively short period of time, I found that photography was just a great way to, to get out out in the streets of Melbourne and just start exploring what was around. So um, certainly didn't go out initially thinking um, I'm going to turn this into a career or or really thinking anything more of it, but um, used it as a as a way to kind of explore and you know understand my my new town in a, in a little more info and and you know things just really progressed from from there. Okay, and your interest uh, previous to that was more moving image. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, no, that's right. So, um, background in, uh, you know, working in, in video um, and, and, and in 3D animation. So, I guess that's always been a bit of an inspiration in terms of how I've worked um, historically, um, you know, looking at, you know, manipulating things in, in certain ways and, and certainly trying to, um, you know, represent you know, images in, in, in different ways. So that's been a strong lane across my career so far, yeah. Okay, great. Um, and as we uh, as it says here, you're the winner of the Hasselblad Masters in 2018 for the streets and urban category. And we'll be talking through some of that experience uh, later. And also just to let everyone know, uh, that's uh, Ben's uh, uh, website address and his Instagram handle at the bottom there, if anyone would like to look up Ben's work. Uh, after the webinar and start to follow him um, just to say that that's three underscores on Ben's Instagram um, 
handle. Uh, always difficult to to see that clearly when you write it. Um, so yeah, let's move on. So obviously, Hasselblad webinar. It's only right to talk about the camera you use, and we've got the H six D one hundred here. Uh, so this is the camera you first used for the Masters project. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, so uh, you know what a what a pretty fantastic introduction into the into the, the Hasselblad system. So um, yeah, so look, I, I use that for the, um, the the Masters work through um, Madrid and. Um, was you know really just such a, a massive eye opener for me in terms of um, what would be coming next, um, in terms of capability for what I could do with my work. Yeah, for sure. Okay, but then more recently you've been using the X One D two. So how do you find that in terms of the comparison between the two cameras in terms of image quality and I guess the advantage for the X One D two and you is the the portability of it. Yeah, absolutely. It was, um, you know, while I loved every minute of shooting um, with the H60, there was a lot of camera there for sure. And um, uh, moving to the the X1D2 um, has been, um, you know, it, it's been really um, a, a game changer for me now. Um, you know, that I can get the kit in my backpack, um, move really quickly. Um, not not worrying about you know a full day um, out shooting. Um, it's you know it's been pretty fantastic uh, in terms of keeping up with with what I need to do during the day. So it's been great. Okay, and a question we get asked quite a lot as part of these webinars is what's what lenses do you have in your kit bag? Is there a, a particular go to lens you have for your work? Yeah, so look, primarily at the moment I've been shooting with the the forty five, the forty five mil, and. Um, uh, it, you know, I've particularly over the last year or two um, been really trying to concentrate on just shooting with that lens alone um, as a bit of a challenge to myself, actually. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's it's such a great lens for me for for street photography. Um, I know exactly when I pull out the camera what I'm going to be what I'm going to be capturing. Um, it's it's been a really good combo. Okay, great. So. Let's move on to some of your early work. And this is a series of images that you name uh, City Shrinker. Um, yeah, so tell us, uh, tell us a bit about these. Yeah, so, um, so I mentioned before, moving into Melbourne, um, was out taking snaps around the city um, and um, probably spent a couple of years doing that. Um, you know, really, I found after a period of time that there was a bit of a theme going on with my work that was more kind of the urban kind of um, areas. Architecture was a really um, interesting um, aspect of the city for me as well. Um, so there was some there was some themes already, I think, kind of bubbling away um, in the background. But I remember um, heading to the National Gallery um, of Victoria. Uh, one weekend and walking through walking through the gallery and I saw this um, amazing huge um, print on the wall and it was um, a teal chip work by a guy, a guy by the name of um, Olivio Barbieri and um, it was the first teal chip image I'd, I'd ever seen and it just completely blew my mind um, when I saw it. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, it, it just it made you know it was um, amazing but I couldn't quite process what was happening so I spent quite a bit of time um, researching what needed to happen you know how the how the technique um, uh, you know it was developed and um, decided that that was something I really wanted to pursue but more on the theme of, of cities and and you know the, the urban stuff that I was doing I hadn't really seen seen the technique applied in in that way so it kicked off what was probably a, a six, seven year journey for me in in developing the series. Um, there weren't many people at all shooting tool shift, I think, back back then in, in 2007. And um, I was I was able to kind of, um, you know, develop things in a way um, that, you know, allowed me to travel a bit more to shoot new things. Um, it was, you know, certainly, um, you know, Really fantastic in terms of um, being able to open some doors and 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 probably more so just started constant 
you know, um, concreting in my mind that photography was something I really wanted to um, pursue um, in life. So um, some really great opportunities in, in doing it. Um, but yeah, it was a, a body of work I spent probably, you know, six or seven years on um, with, um, with the final, I guess, body of work. And this is one of the, the images here. It was a book I did um, called Tiny Tokyo um, and spent, uh, you know, probably, it was around about two weeks. And I think that we shot, um, <laughs> we had a brief of shooting, I think about, 150 images something like totally crazy um to try to to get into a, a couple of weeks um but we we did that there so um you know a really good series of work it also um brought brought home some really important lessons i think that um you know i i apply even now just in terms of what it takes to be able to build a shot so for for this type of technique to work, you're typically having to be elevated. Um, and to be elevated, I mean, there were no, there were no drones um, back then. That wasn't a thing that you could go um, and, and access easily. So, you know, it was mostly rooftops. It was, um, uh, you know, helicopters as well, which was the worst decision I think I ever made. I'm absolutely horrifically bad with heights. Um, and then all of a sudden being in situations with helicopter doors open and, and, and leading out trying to get images was <laughs> a bad career choice, I think, at the time is what I was thinking. But um, yeah. no, I got to, got to do some, some great things with it um, as well. Okay. And uh, kit-wise, so you're using a, a 35 millimeter camera at, that, at this stage, is that right? Yeah. So um, I was, uh, at this point in time, um, you know, photography was probably more in the hobby class for me. And um, uh, I was shooting initially on a, a Canon 5D Mark II. I think that progressed onto a, a, a Mark III eventually. Um, but, you know, early on, um, you know, there was, there was no way that I could you know, afford to buy a tilt shift lens. So, you know, I was using, I was using Photoshop, I was doing all sorts of things to try to, um, you know, mimic what was going on there, but then eventually moved into um, being able to shoot on, on tilt shift lenses, which was, you know, again, I think from a technical perspective in photography, being able to experience shooting on something like a tilt shift lens and what that can achieve um as well was a was a, a a really great experience as well okay and the the tiny tokyo project that you mentioned in the book is is that something that you like you self-funded um as a project uh it wasn't actually i got i got very lucky and um was able to um secure a book deal for that one um so um you know very very lucky at that stage in, in my career to be able to to do that so um, no, I was able to partner with um, a wonderful publisher, um, Chronicle Books, in um, in San Francisco to do that one. So, um, yeah, it was um, it was great. It was, um, uh, but it was also a very very good bookend, I think, in 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 that phase of my career um, as well. Okay, uh, was that part of the the process in determining that you would become a professional photographer to be able to? Yeah, I think so. I think um, uh, you know, I was I was able to learn um, a few things through through that um, that series. I think uh, you know, I learned some techniques around self promotion um, and how to get your work out there, and um, you know, um, you know, just little things like um, going to a, a magazine shop, opening it up, having a look inside, finding out who the editor was emailing the editor trying to um you know get your work in front of them and again this was before instagram and a lot of social media um you know in in the mid 2000s so um i think you know trying that stuff i i probably had no shame at that point in time as well so i was you know very very um okay in the idea of um trying new things trying new things out um, and, and not feeling as though, um, you know, it could, you know, everything was relying on what I was doing at that point in time. So it was, it was a really fantastic time to actually try some things that, 
you know, works, definitely some things that didn't work, but, um, you know, over over the period of time in, in, in trying things, I think um, I started to see um, some possibilities there to do it. And, you know, just, you know, it, it became clear pretty quickly for me, just the process of being able to go and shoot and what that meant um, was, you know, extremely appealing. I felt, you know, the, the happiness in being able to go out and, and shoot for a couple of days and, you know, explore, there was just, there, and there still is just so much appeal around that. So mm -hmm. it, it all it all started to click at this stage for sure. Okay, great, thank you very much. So let's move on to the next uh, series of images, uh, Accession. Um, yeah. yeah, so tell us a bit about these ones. So this was a little bit of a side project that um, happened towards the end of um, the, the City Shrinker work. So I think towards the end of the City Shrinker side of things, Tillship became really commonplace. I mean, everyone was doing it. Um, it became, I don't know, it almost had like a, a bit of a fat stage that, you know, um, no matter where you looked, it was it was absolutely everywhere. It was on ads, it was on TV shows, it was all, all kind of happening. And, um, you know, uh, I remember getting kind of pigeonholed at that point in time as being a tilt shift guy, and um, that was bugging me quite a bit. And I, I, I really knew at that point in time that it was, you know, um, it was going to be time to step away from it. And um, I kicked off what was probably like a two or three year process in um, experimentation in, in seeing um, what to do next. And um, and really hoping to try to find my own style that would kind of pop out through that. So, um, so this isn't, you know, by no means is this um, my like a, an individual style through this one. But this was a really interesting kind of technical um, period for me. Probably no surprises, you know. Um, I think Inception was out around this point in time. You know, there was a lot of stuff going on and. Um, the the idea of being able to um, you know flip some images around and start to actually concentrate on um, you know um, the, the patterns that were being um, you know created through that just trying to get your eye to kind of look at an image a bit differently as well in terms of where you would naturally look for you know look at an image like this. You know, this started to kind of move your eye around and and start doing some some different things, and um, you know, in you know, certainly in the background with this as well, the colour side of things was was definitely kind of brewing for me uh, in terms of just trying some some new things um, to see what was possible. Like this one, this one here, the probably the thing I like the most about this one is you know the infinite kind of horizon thing that's going on to the left here. Um, but yeah, look, certainly, um, you know, this was this was probably the beginning of um, the the breakout from the from the city shrinking years. Hmm. Okay, uh, you didn't seem to learn too much about your fear of heights, though. This is still uh, <laughs> quite a, a sort of a series of images that relied on heights as well. Is that fair to say? Is and look to be fair, also, um, you know, I think it's and this has just been such an interesting thing over time as well. Is when you go to shoot, you you know, I will typically overshoot. Um, I've, um, I've 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 worked with um, I've helped out shooting weddings before with people. I, I really am not I'm 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 not about shooting um, weddings anymore. They are they are far too stressful um, for me, but. Um, when I do, I overshoot. So, um, you know, I will have the finger down for a long period of time. That has changed since then. And I think we'll we'll talk about that a bit later on. But, um, you know, I, I will typically, you know, in, in those days, I would shoot quite a bit. So there was a lot of material that was there and, and not everything was going to work in the context that, um, you know, I was originally shooting for um, as well. So, so this again was like a really important lesson for me around um, revisiting work over time as well. So, you know, a lot of these images I would have shot with an intent initially around the city shrinker work, um, but I, I would be away from home, I'd be in some fantastic locations um, and, and going back with a new eye, um, you know, it could be a, a couple of years down the track um, and, you know, um, you know, 
looking to see whether it has a different meaning or if you're seeing different things within those images. I'm I am just constantly um, you know surprised in, in going back back through the work going I can't believe I let that one go what was I thinking so um, you know a, a, another really useful um, lesson for me personally anyway to, to keep going back and revisiting um, old work as time moves on yeah yeah definitely okay so let's move on now to what we've titled chroma uh, early um, yeah. so I think it's fair to say that your most recent work has quite a distinct style to it with like the tones that you use in your images. Um, so I think is this around the time that you started to develop this style? Yeah, it is. So um, I think, you know, at, at this point after, um, after City Shrinker, after doing some of the accession work, um, I, I really, I really felt quite burnt out. Um, with shooting and um, and just photography in in general, and I didn't pick up the camera for over a year. Um, I really I, I was just kind of struggling for motivation to to do it. And um, you know, after that year or so, I think um, it became clearer to me that you know I've been um, on working on things and taking inspiration from 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 different places, but I really wanted to to work on developing a um, a, a style and aesthetic that was that was me, and it was and, and something I could build from the from the ground up. So, um, you know, spent um, probably twelve months or so um, experimenting with with different things, slowly starting to to dial things in, and. Um, I think it was probably January of 2015, I think um, had the first kind of a heart moment with the work um, down at Bondi Beach in uh, in Sydney, where, you know, middle of the day, super bright um, conditions, just something that a lot of people will probably, you know, step away from. Um, yeah, or, you know, this, this type of thing here. And, um, uh, really um, started to see some of the kind of foundational things that I was looking for starting to come into play. So at, at this point, I knew that um, there was a path to explore, and uh, I got just you know incredibly um, lucky um, to um, to be able to get a couple of months um, in in Italy for for an artist residency. It's the first time um, I had done one. It was the first time I had, you know, more than a couple of weeks to to really just only concentrate on on photography and and the work, and um, just had the um, most amazing experience in being able to sit down consistently over a period of time, just iterate the work and um, and develop the concept. So um, so Chroma was really born you know, mid, you know, um, May-ish um, 2015 and um, and just kick-started a really, um, really interesting kind of um, time for me in terms of um, a new series. I, I really started to lock down on um, and, and my interest around, you know, urban environments and what that meant in, in, in different contexts as well. You know, that that last shot that we just saw um, icebergs in in Sydney that is just such a, a typical scene on the beaches of, of Sydney um, that could seem quite bizarre um, for you know people in a different context that this is just a very kind of ordinary scene that you would um, that you would come across and, and the lifestyle that sits around that um, in in Sydney even for people in Melbourne right we go I go to I go to Sydney dressed in all black and just very clearly and a beard and people are like you are not from Sydney <laughs> so <laughs> it was those kind of things that I, I found that were kind of really interesting from from place to place and at that point I knew that that was um, that was something I wanted to explore in you know more detail. Okay so you say you developed that around about 2015 and 2018 um, well just before actually um, you you entered the Hasbad Masters competition in the streets and urban category and these are the three images that you submitted uh, to win the competition with. So yeah. again, this is before you started using uh, Hasselblad for your camera. Um, 
yeah so tell us about these three images why did you feel that these were the three images that you would submit yeah so um so there's a a, a really good linkage with two of them but the, the first one really i think this was this, this was shot in Florence, the one the one on the left, um, and um, uh, it was done just before there was a thunderstorm rolling in. I, if you look straight at the back of the, the image there, you can see some dark clouds um, in, in the background. It was not, not super clear, but it was getting quite dark, but that just amazing um, sunlight coming through. Um, you know, I think that... Um, I think that the theme of what I was starting to see here were, were how people kind of interacting um, in the spaces that, that they were in. So, um, you know, just a, a, a pretty fantastic kind of scene within within Italy. Um, you know, at that point, you, kind of, you know, I know that after that after that scene kind of had played out, I'm standing there going, I "Can't believe I'm in Italy. This is, you know, how good is this? This is amazing." Um, and then uh, the the middle shot, Nathan's. This was a really incredible moment for me, and for me, it's like what's not in the in the scene that um, that made it for me on this one. So, um, to the you can see that there's a, a lady on the stand there eating a hamburger, uh, eating a hot dog. Sorry, on the on the left. And yeah. what was actually happening was there was a photo shoot going on. So just to the left of that scene, there's another photographer that's all set up ready to shoot this thing and I thought well I'm this is this is fantastic I'm going to step back again and then one step removed take a an image of the scene but what the elements that kind of come into that you've got the guy that's kind of walking through that's kind of looking at the scene going oh my god what's going on here um so just some really um interesting um interactions going on with that, and then kind of linking on to the last one again, those two shots, Coney Island in in New York. I think, um, you know, again, just a, a really interesting kind of snapshot in time. I think so. Um, Coney Island being, you know, the iconic place that it is, with the boardwalk and, you know, what it means for so many people um, to be there, and and how that that place is used through summer and and all the things that go on there. Um, you know, for me, I felt like, you know, for those three images, I had, you know, such a great experience shooting in, in all those locations. So I felt as though, you know, they were, they were the three to put up at that point in time. Um, okay. but back, back to your point on pre Hasselblad, I always again shot on, um, on Canon at that yep. point in time. Okay, so having then uh, won the competition for that category, uh, you were then uh, received the H6D 100 with the 35 to 90 zoom lens. And um, we're about to look through the images that you then shot for the master's book. Um, and the theme was Inspire, is that correct? Yeah, it was Inspire. And um, it was, uh, you know, a really great opportunity um, I think one, one of the really great things in, in, in getting into the Masters is that um, there's a really good opportunity to think about the project that you're going to do and, and how you're going to execute it and the theme of what you're going to be doing doing there. And Madrid was a, a place I'd wanted to shoot in for a really long period of time. I think, again, going back onto that theme of um, the urban environment and what's going on, there is just such amazing, uh, an amazing approach to that in in Madrid. There was a couple of shots just prior in Valencia um, as well. But I think the approach to architecture in, 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 in these areas is just incredible. I think um, some really innovative thinking um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, social house, housing and, and what, you know, leading edge, um, architecture means in that context um, there's some really interesting stories to be um, you know talked about there I think in in Valencia for, for the last couple of images there's just you know city of arts and sciences just architecturally one of the most amazing precincts I've ever seen just absolutely stunning and, and mind-blowing but that was that was born out of necessity um, that you know there was flooding in that area and there were really good reasons to go go and do that so um, look 
we, I think we had about two weeks um, in Madrid. Um, we were able to, um, you know, talk to a lot of locals to get a really good understanding about what the, the city means. Um, the, the rich kind of history, um, you know, in, in the culture and religion and all these kind of things that have passed through, um, it really did feel like, um, you know, a, a really great place to, um, to shoot the, the master's project. Okay, and how, how do you go about your work in terms of, um, so if you take the image on the right here, you know, um, yep. do you happen to wander past and see it and realise the potential for the shot or do you stand there and wait for something to happen and, you know, how long does that generally take you? Yeah, it's um, typically speaking, I'll see something there that um, there'll be a couple of elements that, that work. Um, very rarely will they all kind of snap into gear at the at the one time so there is quite a bit of waiting involved in 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 getting the right um elements i guess to to come into the scene i think you know sometimes you do you do tend to get a bit lucky and, and things will happen um uh but that you know i don't know that that seems to be rarer and rarer for me these days than that, that happens so um you know i think there's you know, there's probably two two ways that I shoot. I think um, the first one is where there's quite a bit of planning that's involved. There's there's nothing staged at all, but there'll be planning around you know a particular event that's going on, or um, you know some different dynamics that I know that being in that environment at that point in time is going to lend itself to to getting some really um, fantastic pictures. Um, and then there are times where, you know, I'll, I'll have the camera on my shoulder or in my bag and, you know, I'm, I'm constantly trying to push myself to be able to, to shoot, um, you know, as much as I can, you know, certainly if I'm, I'm leaving the house, I'm going into the city or if I'm traveling or, or whatever, camera's just going to be with me all the time to, to do that. And things will just, you know, emerge, um, you know, as, as a result of that. So. For a lot, for a lot of these um, images, though, um, in in Madrid, I think there was an element of discovery around what was going on there. But also, yeah, um, you got you got to have a lot of patience. Um, not only in terms of getting, you know, um, some of the the more movable kind of components in play, but time of day is another classic one. Um, I think you know position of um, position of the light in these in these images in particular is just so critical um, to being able to um, you know achieve achieve what I'm looking to do. Okay, and um, how was your experience of using the Hasselblad um, for your work? Um, how did it differ to what you had used before, and was it of benefit? Yeah, so um, it it's been a really significant thing for me because um uh, a lot of my work so the, the output of, of most of my work is is really aimed uh in a gallery setting so um so most of the the works i produce will, will end up being in print at some point in time and, and 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 that's where you really you really get found out in terms of the quality of what you're producing so um so historically with what I was doing, I was pushing, I was pushing these files so hard in terms of, um, you know, removing the shadows, pushing the colour, you know, the blues in certain ways that were, you know, really um, pretty destructive in terms of, you know, certainly the, um, the, the full frame workflows that I had previously, that there was a lot of time, there was a lot of time spent in trying to correct that later on, um, you know, hours and hours and hours um, to do that. And, and even then there were compromises that were made along the way um, to be able to, you know, achieve the, the outputs that I was looking for. Um, but certainly moving over to, to um, the Hasselblad system and, and you know, kind of, um, you know, getting involved in, in the medium format um, side of shooting so many more options were open to me through that. I found that, you know, recovery on images just became so much more simple. Um, you know, there was so much information being captured every time you were taking a frame that, um, you know, from a workflow perspective, 
you know, I was able to not only recover things and, you know, get things within an acceptable zone more easily, but it was allowing me to actually push things a little bit further as well as a result of, of having that additional data um, in place. So, um, so that, you know, that made that workflow situation better. And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, the, the quality of the outputs and the quality of the work, it was a real step up um, in, in terms of what was happening there. Okay, and just generally on the Hasmad Masters, you know, how did it, has it affected your career at all in, in winning the Masters? Yeah, it's been, it's been absolutely incredible. I remember, um, you know, I remember um, assisting photographers years and years ago, um, going down to a bookshop and seeing, you know, the Hasselblad Masters book at a bookshop and just going, this is, you know, how amazing is this? And, and not for a minute. Um, did I ever think that um, that, that was going to be, um, you know, somewhere that I would I would end up um, landing? And um, you know, it's been it's been a really incredible experience. I think not you know not only in terms of the great support from you know from Hasselblad, it, you know, it really is a family environment in terms of the support that happens through um, through there. But the the network of other masters and other photographers. I mean, you know, I mean. I'm in regular contact, um, you know, with with a number of of ex winners, and um, you know that has been incredible in in terms of just you know a network and being able to bounce ideas off and creatively being able to tap into that. Um, but you know, certainly, I think from you know a commercial standpoint as well, I think you know it's been a you know it's been a really fantastic thing um, as well to be able to to do that as well. So you know, it it has been you know, um, a, just such a massive thing for, for my career. It's been, it's been fantastic, yeah. Okay, that's good to hear. Thank you very much. Um, so let's move on and to some other of your recent projects. And um, you've got this project here for the McLaren Formula One team. And mm. um, you attended uh, the Melbourne Grand Prix um, uh, to take these images. So how did this, um, subjects sort of differ to what you'd normally shoot? This was a really interesting one for me. So um, uh, so this was back in 2019. Amazingly, the last Melbourne Grand Prix, can you believe it? Um, it's been that long. Um, but uh, no, this is, a, this is really quite different um, for me in on a number of different fronts. So um, you know, in, incredibly um, grateful, feel quite lucky to have, have had the opportunity to get in contact with the McLaren team and, and to be able to get access to uh, to come in um, as, as part of the team over the weekend and, and effectively just get um, full access to, to the team and the garage and, and everything that was going on on, on that weekend. It was, it was tr I don't think I fully appreciated it at the time, but it was was truly mind blowing, but um, you know, it, it certainly presented a very, very different kind of environment for me in terms of being able to to move quickly and to to really think things through um, in in a different in a different manner. So, as you can imagine, um, on a on a weekend like this, there are so many moving parts and what's in what's going on. Um, there's um, you know technically a lot of things going on. You know, I was, um, you, you're kind of in there in the zone with mechanics and, you know, the team and everything else. And it's a really, you know, kind of interesting thing from a photographer's perspective around, um, you know, I think, you know, I'll see things that I want to shoot. And then you're kind of having to kind of work into the environment effectively as well, because the last thing you want to be doing is getting in the way um, when, you know, when, the race is on and, and all these things are, are happening. But um, you know, it was it was really a magical um, weekend um, to do that. And again, you know, I was shooting on the, the X one D at that point in time. So um, I think I had like a little satchel with me. I had a couple of lenses in the bag, um, but being able to be quite nimble and move around and to be able to switch out lenses quickly and and also not to, you know, this is the other thing with, with street photography. I think that, um, you know, the bigger the kit that you've got, um, and particularly for someone like me, um, who's got a big, you know, ginger beard um, standing out on the street, 
it can like you do want to be able to in certain circumstances kind of blend in and to not make the experience of shooting um you know um daunting or you know startling you know in a in a in a certain regard so um you know being able to, to zip around with the with the, the little x1d um which is you know um the least intimidating camera uh, you know out there I don't, people don't understand the power that's kind of sitting sitting in there in terms of, of what you're doing but um yeah to be able to get around and, and do that over the weekend was was really really fantastic and um to um be able to get out onto the the pit lane while the main race was on to be able to um yeah that was i think that was through one of the the practice sessions there but to be able to um you know, get the team in in full flight for a, for a pit stop during the race was just you know um, it was a it was a really really fantastic experience. Okay, and interesting here that you have some black and whites as well. So moving away from your your style a little bit is is that? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, for sure. I think um, you know I really felt like um, there was such a, a strong team environment going on while i was there it was it was just really um quite amazing to see this group of people um kind of switch on over a, a couple of days and to be able to pull this thing off it, it is such an extraordinary thing in, in what they do and um it really naturally just kind of um you know, I felt as though you know that I had to kind of document as much of what as what was going on as possible. So, you know, it wasn't about necessarily getting the you know the chroma images and the you know the things I want to do. And certainly, you know, I got the opportunity to do that. But um, you know, again, I you know with just some unbelievable access and, and you know the things that I was seeing there around, you know, an incredible team doing what they needed to do. Um, uh, you know, it was it was too good an opportunity not to not to shoot it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, so just before we move on, we've got um, a question from Lee Dirt. Uh, he's asking, uh, can you tell us something about your composition? Uh, is there any particular way you look to compose your images? Um, probably quite centered, I think. Um, you know, everything is you know right in front of me. So um, I'm I'm. I try to make the composition as simple as I possibly can in in most instances, and um, you know I think you know I mentioned before that you know I, I tend to try to shoot with a single lens as much as I can because I think that that really does get you thinking about composition in a really positive way. But um, you know in in more recent times, I'm, when it comes to that composition, I'm I'm really trying to think of what can I what can I do to make this simpler. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely not trying to, um, you know, complicate things on, on that front at all. I think, um, you know, simplicity for me is, has tended to, to work quite well. It's where I'm probably most comfortable as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, so let's move on to the next, uh, group of images, uh, New Yorker in Dubai. Yeah. Um, so this is, you know, again a really, really um, great opportunity. I had um, I had shot some work for um, uh, I'd shot a piece of work in in Melbourne for the New Yorker a, a few years ago for the short stories. So they do a, a single artwork against um, short stories each week, and um, you know had a, a really good experience in in, in doing that. And um, they've just got a, an amazing team. So uh, heading over to New York, I think I, I was over there a few months after doing the shoot, and um, uh, caught up with the caught up with the team there. And we had a really good conversation about doing some more work together. And, and this concept around um, Dubai came up um, around, you know, just some of the you know in, incredible. Things that have been developed effectively in a, you know, what was a desert, you know, not so not so long ago. So, um, you know, it had um, a really great opportunity to get over there and 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 shoot, um, you know, a, a number of different um, scenarios there. Um, 
you know, I think that there's been, um, you know, obviously incredible investment that's gone over there, but, um, you know, the, the rate of development in, in what's happened there is, you know, pretty, pretty mind blowing. So that was a, um, a, a really incredible, um, I think it was four or five days. Again, it was, you know, really kind of compressed in terms of what we were, what we were doing there at that period of time, like Legoland. Who doesn't want to go to Legoland? That was um, that was pretty fantastic. So I, I was actually really quite surprised going going over there um, in terms of the um, the the breadth of things to um, you know uh, explore as well. And again, you know, for me, so um, so different um, from you know some of the things I've been doing um, historically. It was my my first time over in in Dubai, so um, it was a uh, you know really really fantastic um, you know four or five days in in getting a, a bit of a better understanding of um, you know the place and um, and what's there. So that no, was really really good experience. Okay, and um, so with with your work, you you enjoy the travelling part of your of your of your work. Yeah, I, I really do love it, and I think. Um, you know, being able to, um, you know, interact with, um, you know, different communities and to, to get a better understanding of, you know, what things mean for them is, you know, that, it's been such an eye opener. I think, you know, in uh, it can be really, I think it can be really easy to be, um, you know, in your, in your own kind of space and to, to have a certain kind of view of, of what things are and how life is. But, um, you know, it's been, um, you know, uh, amazing to, to be able to do it. I think um, we're living in such an interesting time as well, as far as how, how people interact with their cities and, and all the things that go on around that. So, um, you know, it's been fantastic. Um, I'm, and I'm and I'm really missing it. It's been, um, you know, I would spend, you know, a, a few months in the, you know, at least a couple of months in the year, um, traveling and 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 doing things, and and um, to not be able to do that over the last eighteen months or or two years um, here has been has been pretty crazy. So um, yeah, can't can't wait to to get on a plane and um, go do it again. What would be your your first choice destination once you are able to travel again is there anywhere that you haven't yet traveled but you would like to shoot oh there there are so many places um so um so there's there's some plans i think i'm probably going to be heading back to europe in in april um shooting some new work in in the netherlands um uh with my uh with one of my galleries project 2.0 so really really looking forward to to doing that um I'd also just before COVID, I was I was um, moments away from um, heading over to the states. Um, had a um, a bunch of work that I was um, planning on shooting in in Miami as well. So um, hoping that I can you know get back there sometime really soon and and get that going again. But wow, I mean just I mean so many places, so many places to to visit still. So yeah okay and then uh, just to finish up we've got some of your sort of general uh, recent images um that we'll just have a look through and um, we've got a few more questions if you don't mind um there's a few uh questions with regard to your color processing yeah uh, shashir and uh jonathan um is is what you do in your post process is it a secret recipe or is it something that you're able to share <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, well, look, I think, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, to be honest, it's something that's actually changing quite a bit at the moment. So, um, you, you know, probably even having a look through the photos from, from today, the, the way that I was treating images, um, you know, four or five years ago is very, very different to the way that I'm, I'm treating images now. So, um, you know, it's probably not quite as simple as, um, you know, a, a single kind of filter by, by any stretch of, of the imagination. But um, look, it's it's something that's evolving over time and, and certainly, um, 
you know, I think, um, you know, as, as time goes on, I think, um, you know, I'll, I'll be um, working more and more with people around, around the process and what that means as well, mm. for sure. And I think um, part of Jonathan's question as well is when you choose what to shoot, do you do you pay attention to what colours are in the, the frame? Do you do you sort of visualise how it will look once you've applied your style to it? Yeah, 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 very much so. So I think, um, you know, compositions are a really key factor, but I think colour is really important as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting there. I mean, there are certain colours that um, tend to work better than others in, in my opinion. And again, that's something that's kind of evolved over time um, as well. Um, obviously, you know, the brighter colours will do better, the browns and, you know, those will, you're always, kind of in the, in even the darker areas, you're going to really struggle. I think um, at, at times, greens have always been a little bit, you know, difficult to kind of deal with um, as well in, you know, with, with, with this kind of treatment. So, yeah, look, I think colour is color is certainly something um, that I see, but it, it, even in terms of when I'm looking at composition, colour will, will, you know, will, will guide that quite a bit, for sure. Okay, uh, this image here certainly got a lot of colour, um, but what's unusual for me is that it's a portrait, which we don't see many of, of, your, yeah. of your work being portraits, so this was a, an artist, is that right? Yeah, so this is um, Ash Keating. Um, who, who also lives uh, in Melbourne, um, unbelievable, um, fantastic artist. So go go check out Ash's work um, if you haven't seen it already. So um, so Ash has just got this unbelievable um, practice, um, uh, which is pretty wild. That he will um, he will paint these unbelievable um, pieces, but he'll do it in he'll basically inject paint into fire extinguishers and just lets loose with these these fire extinguishers so really 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 incredible and um he invited me to come down and um to to shoot um him so behind him there was a warehouse here in melbourne really really massive concrete warehouse it's huge and um uh came down we, we shot a little bit of drone work out there um on, on one of the mavics with him um but also went out and, and, and shot some um, some images of him doing this with the, the X1D as well, which was totally terrifying. Um, you know, plastic bags and all that kind of stuff um, to, to try to keep the, the camera okay. I had paint all over me at the, the end of it, but um, uh, just one of those one of those moments where we had really good light. Um, I think the the way that you know he was literally dressed like this as he was as he was doing the work um and was you know for me it was just um you know such a a um a, an interesting subject to to shoot so even though I don't normally um get into the portrait side of things it was a it was a great thing to do so okay and then just to finish up um quick question if you don't mind um in regards to how you split your work between um you know like your personal uh projects and your commissioned work so what's the balance there for you yeah so um so the the, the primary kind of focus for me is around the the gallery work so um i'm you know uh, i think the focus for me is really around um you know, typically speaking, I'm 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 usually working towards a body of work um, that can be released at at a point in time. There's so much work that kind of sits around that um, as well. So you know, a large amount of, of personal work um, as well. But you know, there there is also um, some commercial work that will kind of come come as a result of that as well. So um, you know, I think. Um, my um, my approach on the on on the commercial side of things is probably a little bit different to um, some other photographers in that you know I'm, um, I am really focused on that gallery work and being able to get into collaborations with you know um, different brands where where things kind of line up in terms of what we're trying to do. Um, is, is how I've approached um, the commercial side of things. So, 
um, yeah, look, I'd say probably 80% of 80% of the work would be around um, uh, the gallery-based um, work, and then you know probably 20% around you know the personal and commercial work um, sitting around that as well. Okay, great. And um, and just uh, yeah, another finally, but um, viewers may have noticed your V system camera there on the shelf behind you. Is that something you're you're playing around with at the moment as well? It is. It's a um, it's a it's a five hundred three CX, I believe. Um, so so something I only um, uh, picked up a bit earlier this year. So um, I haven't had a huge amount of opportunity to go shoot with it yet. But it's been something I've been dying to um, get involved in um, for for a long time. Um, where where. Um, in the process of building a, a dark room at the back um, where you know I'm, I'm really excited to be um, you know um, getting you know into the film side of things but but equally um, uh, you know one of the things I've really wanted to um, explore is you know um, the, the digital backs now that you can that you can snap onto the back of these and it's just really intriguing for me that um, you can get a, a piece of technology from now 50 megapixels, put that on a piece of equipment that was, um, you know, developed, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, yeah. and um, to be able to bring those two worlds together, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to shooting with it over over the next couple of months. Okay, and uh, and I look forward to seeing the results. So uh, yeah. Please be sure to share them. Um, okay, yeah. So thank you very much, Ben. Um, thanks again for your time and um, appreciate the, the the late hour for you. Uh, we'll let you get off uh, to bed now. And um, just to remind everyone that um, Ben's website is on the screen there and his Instagram uh, handle if you'd like to follow Ben's work uh, with the three underscores in the handle there. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Ben. And uh, hopefully we'll see you. Um, traveling again soon and if you're coming Europe way hopefully I'll get to meet you again yeah absolutely thanks Mark thanks everyone thank you very much so just to finish off quickly um, if I could just ask um, if if you could help by filling out the the uh, the feedback survey that will pop up once you leave the webinar it's always good to get your feedback uh, to know what we're doing well and what we could do better uh, so yeah, please let us know um, your opinions there. Thank you very much. Also, as another quick reminder that the webinar today has been recorded and we'll be posting a recording on the Hasbad YouTube page uh, either later today or worst case tomorrow morning. And you can also find all the other Hasbad webinars we've done over the last sort of 18 months, two years on there as well. So if you've missed any, you can catch up there. And then last of all, for any more information, of course, we've got Hasselblad.com, our website. You can find anything on there from our future webinars and events, uh, everything about our product range, our partner network around the world, uh, lots of inspiration in terms of images and stories from people using our cameras, uh, lots on our history, and you can also request a demo and ask for any support that you may need. So thanks again to, to Ben and thanks to you for joining, and we'll look forward to seeing you again on another webinar soon. Thank you very much.